Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to the stream. It's time for another exciting episode of Measuring Dev Skills with Code Signal. Today, we're going to be looking at a bit of a different type of task. It's going to be a data analysis task. We're going to talk about what that means, um, how the Code Signal platform allows us to use this type of task, um, and we're going to actually see <laughs> at least part of the task as well, part of the solution. Before we dive into that, though, I just wanted to mention a couple things. So first of all, I mean, by this time, if you viewed any of the previous episodes, you're probably pretty familiar with the code signal interface. I mean, it's pretty consistent throughout all the task types. We have our IDE window over here. We have the task description over here. This one's a bit of a longer one, but we'll get through it. We have some data about the tests down here, and we have sort of our buttons for running the test or submitting that kind of stuff over there. Uh, one thing I don't know if we've actually demonstrated before is the fact that we can sort of resize this stuff. So there's some modularity to the, uh, to the interface. So I think for today, yeah, somewhere around here is probably the right size. Yeah, we'll just get that scroll bar off of there. Okay, perfect. So what is it that we're actually talking about today? Well, it's data analysis. Uh, as we all know, data has become a very important part of all of our lives. Let's say you're running an app and you're collecting a lot of user data and you wanna use that for some meaningful purpose in order to provide better value to your, uh, to your clients, uh, to understand their needs, etc. right? We wanna collect that data, but we wanna get some meaningful information out of that data. We wanna get value out of that data. And so that's where data analysis comes into play. So we're looking at a task here. Uh, this is sort of meant to simulate a real world experience, much like many of these code signal interview tasks, right? We don't want something that's just like use Dexter's algorithm or something like that that's not gonna be relevant to the actual responsibilities of the job that we're trying to screen or interview for. So in this case, if we want someone who can do data analysis, let's be realistic about that data analysis. So number one, we're gonna be using Python today. Uh, we'll get into the details in just a second, but looking at what's been provided here, we've got a .json and a .csv. These are really common uh, file types for a lot of data that we might be collecting. Uh, maybe we're grabbing something from an API or something like that, right? The main thing is that we're getting data in this form and we wanna perform an analysis on it. Specifically, I mean, data.json has a number of fields over here. We can sort of see what these are all about over here. Uh, and then data.csv has basically, you know, similar kinds of stuff, but in a very different format. So rather than like each field being labeled like key value pairs, instead, this is more like a table. So we have columns and rows representing the entries. Okay, in terms of what we actually want to do in this task, we want to find out which day of the week has the lowest mean overdue value, and then we want to output it to the console. So basically, these two uh, files have information that sort of, um, they, they have things in common, right? So we can sort of think of like the ID here and the ID here as being representative of each other. It, it's like, um, like a foreign key kind of situation. So th these pieces of data sort of correspond to each other. We're gonna have to find a way to merge them. Now we've done stuff like that before when it comes to dealing with um, databases, but we haven't actually done this using JSON or CSV or the kinds of files that we would normally expect for this data analysis kind of stuff. So we're looking at an example down here. There's a lot to look at over here. This is basically what test one is, and we'll dive into that in just a second. Uh, but basically we've got our JSON with a, a bunch of info over here. We've got our data.csv with basically the same amount of info, but different parts of it. And we need to be able to put these together and then perform an analysis on, uh, what was it again? We want which day of the week has the lowest mean overdue value, and we want to output that to the console. Okay. Outputting it to the console shouldn't be too tough. I mean, basically we're doing that already with our print hello. I'm just gonna do a control R to run what we have in the IDE window right now. Uh, you might be noticing that it's actually taking a while to run this stuff. So I suppose we could actually talk about why that is, because this is one of the slower uh, tasks. It does take kind of, yeah, a, a bit of time to run this. Um, so basically what's going on here is it's, it's taking this information from all the tests and it's sending it over to the code runner server. 
which is a dedicated server uh, just for running these kinds of things, right? So that it's free from noise, you know, um, things like your the strength of your internet connection, maybe your processor speed. We don't want these things to affect the results at all. Um, and so basically the idea is that all of this gets sent to a code runner server uh, to, to run this stuff and, and only this stuff basically. Specifically, we're using a Docker container based on a Docker image and it's gonna basically set up kind of like a virtual server. Uh, and the advantage to Docker is that it sets it up relatively quickly. And more importantly maybe is that it can kind of destroy or, or, or remove, you know, shut down this virtual server also very quickly without a lot of mess, that sort of thing. Uh, okay, so basically when we run the test, it's sending this stuff over. It's actually running this setup script over here, which you might notice is kind of similar to the stuff that we have in the uh, example on the side here. Well, actually, I believe it's the same data. But anyway, the point is we're sending all of this stuff over to the code runner server. It's running this bash script. So we'll get into the details maybe in a minute, but essentially it's setting all this stuff up. It's then running whatever code we have in the IDE. Uh, it's getting the result, it's returning it, and it's displaying it in this nice format. Uh, it would be nicer if we had check marks over here, but I mean, we have to get the right answer here. So right now we're just printing hello. What we expect to be printed is the day of the week that has the lowest mean overdue value. And then this other part, which I guess we didn't really talk about, which is that based on the X and Y values from data.csv, we wanna find the one that's closest to the mean location of all the data. Uh, so that's what this C part is over here. So Friday being the day of the week, uh, so that's the first part, and then there's this other part here. I think for today what we'll just do is solve the first part, okay? So I actually have some code for that that I'm just gonna paste in right now. Now, uh, before we do that though, we've sort of talked about these before. We've used requests, we've used mysql.connector. We've used these when we're dealing more with database kind of stuff, but today we're gonna use pandas, which is a Python library. It's a popular Python library for data analysis. Uh, Python is typically like a pretty popular language used in academia, but increasingly we're starting to see it used in industry as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and run the tests on this. And while that's running, because we did notice it took a while last time, we'll talk about the code just a little bit over here. So days is basically just all the days of the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, etc. cetera. Um, we're getting our data from our actual two files over here. And then we're representing these as data frames. So this is where pandas comes into play. You notice we're using PD to represent pandas. Um, it has a bunch of built-in functions that allow us to do an analysis on these things. And we basically represent all of this using data frames. We're gonna merge these two data frames. Uh, we're basically just setting up which indices here so set index ID and then index call is zero over here. So that's allowing them to know what it what they should be merging together. So like this ID here and this ID here, or more like, uh, yeah, this ID here and then this ID over here. So it's matching them up together. Like for example, this first one has an ID of one. Uh, it would match that up with this one, put it together in a big table. We could actually print that table if we wanted to, but I, I mean, it seems like it's working. We're getting the value, so. Uh, hopefully <laughs> you trust what you're seeing here. Um, from there, we're using a lot of built-ins that come with pandas. So things like dot day of week, right? Which is nice and convenient. It allows us to take some stuff from uh, this format right here, which is uh, not as easy to tell what the day of the week is in this format. And we can just use this very simple built-in function, this method to give us the actual weekday. From there, we're using a lot of other built-ins to uh, and pandas built in specifically in order to give us information about well what we're actually looking for right so we want to group by weekday we want to take the mean we want to take the index of the minimum one and that's what we want to then print out from our days uh, array over here so we just have like an array that's monday tuesday wednesday etc and we're just using the index of that we're printing it out so that's where we got this friday thing from so something we're noticing here is there's a lot of tools here a lot of real data analysis tools that we're we're able to use within the ide because we're able to import panda some real tools right uh, it seems like we are getting the right answer, or at least part of the right answer. We would need to actually implement the other part to get this, but uh, I'll leave that as an exercise to the viewer, I guess. The, the main thing I wanted to talk about is you might be looking at this and thinking, okay, so we've got this bash script. 
it's kind of clearing out the DevOps folder and then it's recreating it just in case there was anything in there already. It's creating all of this stuff. So within our files, it's creating a data.json file, it's creating a data.csv file, and then it's basically putting this stuff in the data.json and it's putting this stuff on the in the data.csv. You might look at that and think, well, you've got all this information right here. Why wouldn't you just feed this in the form of like a test? Why wouldn't you just give us the information like directly? You know, we have it all here. It seems a little silly to be like creating a new file and then having us access that file. But if we didn't do it that way, it wouldn't really be mirroring the actual data analysis process that we would see in real life. So the point is we want to make this as realistic as possible for our candidates so that they're actually demonstrating the skills that they would need to be using on the job. So if that means going into a JSON file, going into a CSV file, using pandas, doing some data analysis on this stuff, so be it. And we want to simulate that as accurately as possible. So. Hopefully that gives you an idea of the kind of data analysis tasks that are available on the CodeSignal platform. Uh, I hope you'll join us again next week for another exciting task. I'm looking forward to it and I guess I'll see you then. Bye.